right, welcome back. This is Wake Up Sierra Leone on AYV Television and Radio. Don't forget to send your comments and questions to the uh, Facebook page, Africa Young Voices Media Empire, and add your voice to the conversation. In our first segment this morning, we're going to discuss the Sierra Leone People's Party, SLPP National Women's Leader election that uh, um, ended in some chaos um, in um, Kailaun Town, Eastern Region, over the weekend and was cancelled actually. Um, and um, on the election will be held today at Katko Hall um, here in Freetown after um, the National Executive Council, the NEC, agreed that it should be conducted today. So to discuss more um, about the elections and the preparation for um, other delegates' um, activities within the SLPP, we have Umaru Napoleon Kuma, he's the Secretary General of the Serbian People's Party. Good morning, um, Napoleon, and welcome to the program. Good morning, and thanks for having me this morning. You're very much welcome. Um, the first of all, I want to ask, is, is the leadership of the SLPP, the, the executive, are you organizing um, or uh, conducting these elections today? Definitely. At 11 a.m. this morning at the Issa Katko Hall, as you rightly said, it will be conducted today as um, directed by the National Executive Council of the SLPP on Tuesday. Okay, there was a body that was, um, you know, appointed or nominated in Put Loco, which is an independent body. Are they not um, uh, conducting the elections? Is it the executive? <laughs> they are the body that is going to conduct the election. Basically, the body we, we, are, we elected in Put Loco is part of the electoral processes in regards to our internal party democracy. The next meeting we had in Put Loco on Tuesday had been slated for that day since the 11th of November this year. And um, in that particular meeting, that's what we normally do before the National Delegate Conference. That's the last next meeting we do hold before going to the National Delegate Conference. And in that meeting, we do elect the Independent Electoral Monitoring and Oversight Committee. And we also do verify and confirm the list of all delegates that are eligible to vote at the National Delegate Conference. And by our rules and regulations, published on the 24th of March, um, for the conduct of party elections this year, we did state in that rule that the IMOC, when so established, is responsible for the conduct of all national officers' elections and any other election that will be conferred on it by the National Executive Council. So apparently, after the NEC was duly elected, the National Executive Council then agreed that um, the conduct of the national women's election should be handed over to them as required by the rules and regulations as one of the elections referred to them. Okay. So NEC, that body now will be conducting elections here today. Okay. It's an independent body. It's, do, it's not subject to any influence to anyone within the but, party. But you're providing the delegate list and all other um, you know, um, things that needed for that. The, how that many delegates are we talking about? That's definitely what we are going to do. We are only supplying them the delegate list. We are talking about 324 delegates. There were some absentees in Kailau, and um, absentees in the sense they were delegates, but they were not present on the day of voting. So at the end of the day, those that voted were there, which is 302, but the absentees, everything has been added and sent up to the independent body. Their names will be kept on the roster. If they, if they show up today as delegates, they are qualified to participate in the process. Okay. A and um, who are eligible to vote? Good. What we did was basically, this is the first time we, we truly vision of our leader, His Excellency President Julius Madabiu. He decided that um, why not have the women all by themselves to elect their own leader. Prior to this time, we were having the women's leader elected in the National Delegate of over 800 people, of which normally we had only about 200 women representing the entire SLPP. In those delegate conferences, it's possible for a woman to be elected even without getting the 200 votes. So we extracted the women. In that constitution, it stated uh, that any woman, if you look at um, a provision in our constitution under the Women Council, it stated clearly that um, those that are eligible to vote as delegates for the Women Conference are the women's leaders from constituencies, district, and region, that's one. All female elected members of parliament, that's two. All female elected councillors, that's three. And any older female that is qualified as a delegate under the provisions of this constitution, which means our constitution. Now, there are categories of areas where we created um, conventions where people go and vote as delegates. It starts from the district convention. 
the constituency convention, district convention, regional convention before you come to the Women Council and now the National Delegate Conference. So this is the situation. In the district convention, it stated clearly the composition of the delegates for the conduct of the district convention that will elect the district chairman. In that provision, it stated here clearly that all constituency executives, which is 10 of them, are all qualified as delegates to vote in the district convention for the election of members of, I mean, of, of the district chairman, which apparently means the, t the district executives, 10 of them are all qualified as delegates under the district. So if there is any woman in that executive that qualifies that person as a delegate under the provisions of the constitution, same way as the provision that says any other woman that qualifies a delegate. So we have affiliated party organizations who are not within the main party administrative structures. These are all affiliated organizations, about five of them. These affiliated organizations as well have delegate status for the National Delegate Conference. So they appointed, some of those affiliated organizations appointed women as delegates to this year's convention. So automatically, those women that were appointed by these affiliated organizations were only qualified as under the provisions of the Constitution. So these are the women we, we, we put all together as sent to us by the various regions. All what we did as a secretariat was to compile the delegate list as provided to us by the various organizations, the various party structures across the board, and we were published for anybody to see. So for the other, um, the general members who don't hold executive positions or parliamentary seats or any form of leadership in the party who are also females, who want to vote, how are their own selections and decisions represented in this election? Well, this is what happened. We, in the internal party structure, we, we start our elections from the um, sectional zonal level. At that level, everybody is allowed to participate. As long as you are a registered member of the SLPP, you are allowed to participate to elect a sectional executive. By electing that sectional executive, you are now conferring your own authority on that section. The sectional executive or the zonal executive goes about in the provinces to elect the chiefdom executive. The chiefdom executive comes up to elect the constituency executive. So it's all a transfer of authority at different levels. But what we did was at the starting, at the very bottom of the structure, starting from the point, there's a general participation, which is why during those processes we had a little bit of disagreements, chemistry, we had to redo and redo because it was everybody as long as you're a registered member of the Israeli People's mm. Party in that area, they voted. So once you come to that level, it becomes a delegate structure that has been created now. You voted for people at the sectional level to represent you. This section goes to vote for their constituencies or in the province to vote for the chiefdoms. The chiefdoms come in to vote for their constituency. And the constituency now goes to vote for the district. So it goes like that within the party structure. Uh, uh, Napoleon, decades ago, yeah. um, that's how the world voted mm -hmm. and um, paradventure you have like 50 people who voted uh, one individual to represent them amongst those 50 plus the one representing they would still have a, have a, a disagreement as to who to vote for in an election like this now where some would be going left others would be going right so to confer that decision upon one person to represent a mass number of people. I, I'm wondering why does the SLPP have this format when the world has moved beyond this decades it's not ago? The, it's not the, those are, I don't know if you'll be following party structure or internal party politics. It's always done on delegate basis. You can't get the entire SLPP membership of over 2.5 million to go to a convention to vote for the executive. Yeah, but you just you said uh, you don't, you don't with the, the election for the women, mm -hmm. it, it's been, it's been um, cut down to making it only the women eligible to vote. So I'm wondering why not, yes, mm -hmm. for this election for the women, mm -hmm. I'm wondering why not let every female member of the SLPP make their own decision as well through the ballot box on who they want their leader to be, rather than just um, having selected few. It's not selected few. We need to understand the concept of representative democracy. If they are voted at the, section, at the sectional level at the beginning of the process, everyone has participated and you've elected your executive, you are conferring authority on them to represent you. So if this one comes up at different level and we create a delegate structure to vote for them, it shows the representation. If there was no structure, we are bringing everybody in the SLPP to participate and vote for those they think are capable to represent them in their sections. We've divided the country into sections. We divide the country into zones.
those zonal executives, every SLPP member in that zone participates in that election. I totally understand the point you're making. The question it, it I'm asking is... It's definitely not practically possible, QBM. The question I'm asking is, yeah. I understand that's the structure, yeah. but I'm asking why is it so put as a structure, again, going back to the example I made that w it could be the three of us seated here, we would disagree on what fruit to pick as breakfast. We would disagree on whether we're having tea or coffee. That's human But nature. to have one person make that representation when, of course, the person is an individual, 10 chances are the person is going to vote for whoever the person thinks that they want to vote for, not necessarily who the rest of those people that individual is representing would have wanted to choose. Again, they would not all agree on one candidate, yet their votes would go into just one candidate. That's democracy. We have about 7 million people. We have about 132. Is that not the opposite of democracy? It is. We have, one, we have about 7 million people in Sierra Leone or more. We have 132 MPs representing all of us in parliament. Is that, demo, is that not democracy? But all the people in parliament MPs. were voted for by the constituents, 20. not just the, 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 the chairman or chairwoman of the community or headman or headwoman or chief of the community. Everybody in the community who is 18 and above had an opportunity to vote for their MP. So the chairman and headwoman of that community was voted at the very beginning by everybody within that community to represent the, the community. So the, so the community point cannot, of the question the, the person be, cannot take decision on behalf of the community. Would this be an adequate representation it of, is. Of, of the females, of all the females the way it has in the SLPP, it, making a decision of who their leader would be? It, 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 it is because it has, it, it, it has created a structure and it has given the opportunity. Like I said earlier, the participation starts from the, be the beginning. Everybody in the SLPP everybody votes for their representatives. Okay. Those Napoleon. representatives go about to vote for the leadership. Le le let's piggyback at, yeah. uh, to what happened in, in, in Kailau. Thank you. Um, you went there to, to have um, the, the women's um, congress, their, their conference, mm. and an election. Mm. It's ended in, in chaos. You know, the, the we, we saw videos, their videos, we'll be playing them actually, of mm. how uh, people were shouting and fighting, and you had to cancel the election. What what was the reason for um, the cancellation of the election? The poor, they were not fighting in the hall, they were shouting. Women don't fight, they shout. Okay, they were shouting, it was chaotic. <laughs> Do we agree to that as Thank well? You. <laughs> Thank you very much. And um, apparently, the we we had two elections to conduct in Kailan. We when we went to the hall, into the hall on that day, we had um, issues bordering on our constitution, in which some of the women raised and they asked questions. As um, Secretary General, one of the drafters of the constitution, I stood up and explained everything to them, like my sister and I are engaging ourselves on the provisions of our constitution. I explained to them all the provisions and who is qualified and who is not qualified. And uh, we passed that stage, we agreed. And after which we announced the delegates to them and they all agreed and we participated effectively in the deputy women's leader elections. That was conducted, announced, a winner was announced and then we came to the national women's leader convention. We did the elections, towards the completion of the elections, some of the candidates came and reported that there were some movements within the hall which they were not satisfied with. You've seen people going outside, people going into the toilet, people coming outside, etc., etc. We were busy on the high table. We didn't know, we didn't see what was happening at the back. But they were so very, very more insistent on their claims that they were seeing movements of people going around, people that were not supposed to be talking to people, they were doing that. So when the elections was completed, we were about to take the boxes out. Because what we did basically, all the candidates were required to bring their own ballot boxes. Mm -hmm. They seal their own ballot boxes. They locked it up. They, they locked their ballot boxes with their keys and the keys were in their possession. So we called them to bring out their ballot boxes and open them for us to count. They insisted that no, no counting should take place. Mm -hmm. We spent hours. That was where the argument came about. All the arguments you see, all the shouting you had them doing in that hall. That? I, I saw another video of mm. the first lady who said, when they <laughs> Well, welcome back. This is uh, Wake Up CLU on AYV Television. We're very much sorry for um, that technical break. And um, we're back. We still have Umaru Napoleon Kuma, the Secretary General, National Secretary General of the ruling SLPP with us in the studio. Napoleon, I was asking, was trying to ask 
Um, there's a video of the first lady who was also a delegate, I'm sure, in, in Kailau, um, making a statement about when they went to vote, they said, um, you know, cards are not available again. I, it was like two people remaining to vote. Uh, so y you're saying otherwise, and that was not the problem. Wasn't that what um, brings about the, 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 the tension? Well, like, like I said, prior to that incident, those complaints are already coming, and uh, they were already insistent that based on those movements they were seeing, they were not happy with the process, all of them. That just added to the you know, agitation that was in the hall on that particular day. And uh, at the end of the day, after the argument, as you said, we brought our sisters, mothers, our wives together. You know, they got a lot of, I mean, they got emotional to a little bit and they were shouting and everything. Well, at some point, even though she, she is a delegate as well, but she's also mother of the nation. She was in the hall and she saw the women and she stood up to make that announcement that rather than all sitting here and keep arguing and everything, why not just end this? Because that was what the other side was asking for. Mm -hmm. All the other candidates were saying that this process should be should stop. We should go to Freetown. We should go continue there. We should go to the leader and everything. <coughs> so she just came up and that was the agitation. That was what the, the So you cancel the election based on a recommendation? Not that based on a recommendation. Prior to her coming in to make that statement, the leadership was already in conversation. Myself, the chairman, were there. We are in constant conversation with the other top leadership of the party as to which decision we were to take. We had already taken the decision, and if you look at the footage, the mic was in my hands, and we were about to announce it. She came forward and said, I want to say something. And as mother of the nation, we gave her the opportunity. She stood up and said, okay, my women, you're all my women. What I want is a united SLPP. I want us all to be together. I don't want us to keep shouting. This shouting has got to a point. If you have been asking for us to cancel this and go to Freetown, let's do it and let's go to Freetown. So we all agreed and um, we came to Freetown and uh, as required, luckily for us, I had already slated the next meeting for that day in Port Loco. The notices were out on 11 November. So we put that particular issue as one of the agenda items for the next meeting. And NEC deliberated upon it and NEC took the decision. NEC is the second highest decision making body after the party conference. So once NEC took that decision and mandated the, 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 the executive. Now this independent body to go, everything was handed over to them. And they've done fantastically well. They've been working right around the clock. And yesterday we, sh we saw pictures and footages of um, all the candidates and the members of the independent board. We were all together. They agreed on the delegate list. They had discussions. There were a lot of arguments over two hours. But at the end of the day, they were able to come to a conclusion, agree on the delegate list, and that list was published by the chairman of the IMO. Uh, and the first lady, uh, uh, being one of the delegates, has uh, been an issue with um, some of um, uh, those who were there as well. How did she become a delegate? Uh, she's a, um, she's, first of all, she's a member of the SRPP. A registered and fully paid up member of the SLPP. Mm -hmm. She also belongs to one of the affiliated organizations of the SLPP that has delegate status within the SLPP. That is the Palm Tree Organization One. So this organization, Palm Tree Organization, and five and four others making it up to five, they all have delegate status. It's about ten delegates each. So what they did was those organizations submitted their delegate list. Among the names they submitted, they submitted about 10 names of delegates. Five of them on that list were all women. The first lady happens to be one of them. So she automatically qualified as a delegate under the constitution. That's why she was there. And now bringing the election over in Freetown, the expectation is that um, the wrongs would be corrected. What are the measures? Number one, NEC handed over the conduct of the elections to an independent body made up of eight people drawn from all the regions of the Republic of Sri Lanka. That's the representative democracy we do practice. The way we elect IMOC, and each region of the country nominates one person, and um, two former members of parliament are nominated, and the chairman also is nominated, and they are all voted for. These are people, based on our rules and regulations, uh, maybe they've been far above the frail within the internal, the internal politics of the SLPP, and everybody trusts them, and the chairman is the Professor David Senge, and uh, this body will be conducting the elections independently. Mm -hmm. That's one of the methods. And they've put their own measures in place. I don't know what they have put in place because all I'm, I've done is to give them a delegate list. And uh, this morning, they just called me before I was coming here that he needs a printer in the hall during the elections to 
maybe you know, maybe I know what he wants to print, I'll be giving that to him as well. And also the registered stamp of the party, I'll be giving that to him and I'll come back to my office to continue my work. <laughs> so they'll be conducting the elections, they put everything in place, and I'm sure whatever they've put in place is very, very much waterproof and tight because I saw the picture of them yesterday. All of the delegate people who could barely, you know, talk to each other since they started their campaign, we were all together yesterday smiling. I saw all the five can the four candidates, Josephine, Fatmata, uh, Hawafuri, uh, and Fatmata Bokari, they were all in the photo, you know, smiling and laughing all over. So that's a very, very good and positive move. Uh, and what are a very good the <coughs> internal security measures, the internal party security measures, uh, because you rightly said the women didn't oh, fight, okay. but they argued, they yeah. just shouted. Yeah, yeah. But if there's a situation where some of the supporters go, no. whether or not they make okay. it in, even if it's outside, I there are chances of I energy levels I to go to up. I understand that now. What Ned did was that um, nobody's going to be an observer, like we invite observers from the party structure and party membership. Nobody's going to be there. It's IMOC, the delegate, and press, you know, to cover the whole program where it is necessary and the security people. Nobody will take their supporters there. They will stay far away. We're doing it in the Isakatuko Hall. I don't know if you've been around that hall. Mm -hmm. They've already, they've guided the perimeters and everything. And the delegate tags have been printed by district. And um, we've even, we even asked the printer to put the names of the delegate. So once you are a delegate, before you access the, the entrant, you'll be issued your delegate tag and you'll go in and you'll sit, the seat, you'll sit in, the, in the pew that is allocated to your district. So all of them will be in there. There will be no observer to distract any, uh, the process and end up person to argue anything now. Napoleon, do you want to take responsibility for um, where your party is today conducting another election after you had the elections in, in Kailau? Do uh, you want to take responsibility of not conducting uh, transparent, free and fair elections that you had to cancel the election at the end? Well, it depends to your meaning of transparent, free and fair. Everything was done openly, I'm coming. Mm -hmm. Everything was done openly. But elections, the idea for every, anybody who wants to go into election is to win. Any, there is any, if, you, if you are contesting for whatever it is, your first objective but is you to win. But you conducted other elections. So you we conducted exactly. The, we the, conducted the, several elections. Yeah, exactly. We went there, we conducted the, delegate, the deputy women's election. Mm -hmm. That was very successful. Mm -hmm. And it came to that one, and people disagreed, mm -hmm. which is bound to happen. Uh, were you able to look at the concerns? I, I watched the, the statements made by the incumbent, Fatima Tassane, before the elections. Yeah. She raised um, some concerns. Even, even before All of them. Then, she sent letters, I, I saw a letter. Were, all of them so were is it that as a party we are not able to address some of these concerns oh. before going to the elections that leads to the tension um, um, after right. the elections and during all the right. election? The letter, the letter she sent out was received on the day we were in Moyamba for the youth conference, which was on a, fri which was on a Friday, and on uh, Friday evening, and the Saturday was the women's convention. So I, we t I asked, told them that since we are going to the delegate hall, those concerns will be addressed. That was the first business of the day. After the president addressed and left, we came back into the hall. Famata Sawane, Joseph Jackson, all of them, they raised concerns upon concern, and each and every concern they raised was addressed. Each and every question they asked was answered. Mm. That is why they decided to participate in the process, first by electing the deputy. So the process was smooth and going mm. through until it got to that point and people became you know, agitated and said they would not agree. Uh, and y yourself and the chairman have been accused of, of uh, severally of manipul manipulating the po process, supporting certain candidates. Um, is it, I will ask again, is it because you've not been able to make the whole process very transparent? To a point, people will come to vote and they say they don't have card, mm -hmm. as stated by the, by the first lady. I is that the reason why it has to end, it had to end this way? In terms of the accusation, Achebe says on easy, on easy lies the head that bears the crown. Mm -hmm. Everything that happens, of course, we are the leadership. People have to look on to us, and uh, everything is being thrown at us. We accept that. That's the burden of leadership. Um, I accept that. But to say any attempt was done deliberately to disenfranchise anybody is untrue, and uh, that we are supporting a particular candidate against another, that's very, very much untrue. We need everybody in the SRPP. At the end of the day, and I spoke to them on that day, that whatever you're doing, even if you're speaking your truth, speak it calmly. Because at the end of the day, once you're declared winner, your first target is to bring everybody together. 
don't engage in a campaign that after the campaign will not be able to look into the eyes of another person. Mm. So we need everybody in the SLPP. So there is no way I, as Secretary General of the party, will stand up and say I prefer this candidate over that candidate. I will never do that. And that has never happened. But like I said, people become suspicious. This is not, this, the, 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 this was just 300, a little over 300 women were trying to manage and it became difficult in arranging and organizing. By the end of the day, we've been able to stay far above the frail. I've heard of it, even up to last night, accusation kept flying in, even after they've agreed on the delegate leave, but I have to take my time again to explain to each and every one of them, and even met them in groups, and they all understood exactly. And this morning, again, we were meeting myself, the chairman, to clarify all the issues that came up as concerns yesterday, so that when they get into that hall, it will just be elections and announcement of the results. Okay, let's see if we can take some messages. Yeah, see, we, are, we have to leave you because here on you the have stage. to go, yes. Um, Let's see if we can take, but I want to ask quickly before we take um, some messages, where will this leave your party at the end? Because it seems there's already some faction. It's um, the first lady supporting a <coughs> candidate as against the incumbent um, who um, have merged with some other candidates. Um, I it's two groups within the party. Where will this leave um, your, your party at the end of it all? Um, once we conduct the elections today, winner is announced, we're all coming together to achieve our goal which is re-electing our president overwhelmingly. And the First Lady understands that as First Lady of the nation, she bears the first priority in that, understanding that the, her husband, our president, will have to be elected. And for, her to, for him to be re-elected, the party has to be very much strong and formidable and together. And uh, once the winner is announced today, everybody's going to come together and everybody's going to move forward. She said that in the hall that day. And uh, it's not about hating anyone within the party. Mm -hmm. just about exercising everyone's democratic right. Once we're done with that process, it's all, we're all moving together as a SLPP, as a formidable force to prepare for the 2023 elections. Okay. Uh, are you taking uh, Fatma Tassawane's statement into consideration, what she said before, um, you know, that conference in Kailang, the concerns she raised that um, she said, actually said your party is at the crossroad. The outcome of the elections will determine how united you are, you know, for the 2023 elections. <laughs> Those are campaign discussions and messages. Okay. At the end of the day, she is SLPP. I can, she is SLPP. She has been SLPP all her life, and she will continue to be SLPP. And all of them contest their SLPP. They will continue to stay SLPP and be SLPP, no okay. matter what the outcome of the elections are. Okay. Phoebe, do you have a message? Uh, we do have tons of messages on mm -hmm. our Facebook mm -hmm. page. A lot of uh, them. Who, who, who? Oh. Okay, so uh, Mama Vandi says, Swill, your concept of representative is very naive. Can you look at the way the USA elects their president? Mm. Please wake up. What you don't get, Momo, is that uh, I understand it, but my point is, is that the type of democracy we want to be practicing in this part of the world? Yeah. For the Bundu says, the SLPP uh, movement's leader election was not only an embarrassment to their political party, but an embarrassment also to democracy and the country. The video evidence of fraudulent voting add more salt to the wound. Uh, Sultan Ahmad says, Ankos, the strategy that the Secretary General is outlining here is clear, talking about democracy. Here it is uh, uh, guide, guided by rules and principles, and that is the constitution that they have made, and that is what they are going with. Um, Thomas Roger says, Napoleon looks very calm and relaxed. Soft spoken, I believe, is a well brought up man with integrity. Hassan Mansokago says, Mr. Napoleon, oh, uh, what's the country and the world saw in Kailaung isn't a good representation of a party that boasts of good democratic principles. What assurance are you going to give the general membership such issues isn't going to happen again, especially the upcoming highly charged chairman elections. Um, Swissman says, Umaru, um, you will agree with me that the election is not free and fair and you people are wasting state resources by conducting fake and fraud election at all time. Yeah. Uh, Abs Kams <laughs> says, AYV, we need to know the first lady's involvement in this election because her name was ringing bells. Uh, I don't know why the sudden advertisement after just calling the first lady's name. Fode Bundu um, also says, how can you assure your SLPP supporters that the election will be free and fairly conducted in Freetown? 
uh, Swiss man says, oh my, oh, I saw a video of the first lady. She was um, interfered uh, in a local election. Is it true that the first lady, Fatima Biu, was interfering in an election in the country, yes or no? And um, Asan Mansouk Kagbo, um, Mr. Secretary General, can you kindly tell the party membership exactly the reason as to why the Kailan elections were cancelled and whose decision it was to do so? Uh, Sadu Jalo says the Secretary General and the Chairman, they are in support of the First Lady's candidate against <laughs> Fatmata, who has worked so hard mm. for the party. That's why the true support of SLPP uh, kicked back against selection. The Kailawa SLPP National Women's Leadership Election was to be held in a peaceful atmosphere, but what resulted in the chaotic manner and the postponement was due to interference from above. Fode Bundu says, how can you assure your SLPP supporters that the elections will be free and fairly conducted in Freetown? And um, Kalon Mohamed says, in my opinion, the First Lady have all the right to participate in this election. People should stop blaming her of wrongdoing. Please, please. Uh, um, Ramana, could you? <laughs> Fode Mami says, Umaru, I, I was navvy about how you guys manage the election in Kailan, but this morning you have explained succinctly and I am now calm. Thank you. Um, Boss Ellis says, Napoleon, trust me, some high-ranking members in the party uh, um, in support of, okay, I won't use this as a campaign platform for <laughs> any of the candidates. <laughs> the final one I will take um, is from Joe B. Bangali Jr. He says there are it's a two side to every story. People need to know that before pointing fingers. Mm. Uh, James M. Bangua is asking, why is NEC involved in this election? Is this a national election or am I missing the point? <laughs> uh, um, uh, those are the messages um, I have so far, um, Phoebe, we can take. Um, I don't know if you have more. There are so many messages here and so many and they keep coming in, especially, you know. Them. When we're reading them and they keep coming in, <laughs> uh, there are too many of them. Um, uh, Ali Kamara says, I saw my brother sitting down and smiling. Well done, Sekti. We are with you. The G28. Uh, Kindo Sanku says, the cancellation of election was done purely by the First Lady because this, um, um, the, support, the candidate she supports doesn't win. Um, Bobo Bokari says, this is the beauty of our democracy. The SLPP is always open to criticisms, but all is not lost. Our elders and seniors are now ready to move forward. B.W. Bokari. Um, I think those are the messages we could take um, so far um, in um, the um, Facebook page. On the Facebook page, we've got a lot of messages from our viewers. And, um, you know, politics, they're always very active to comment and ask questions. People are um, so interested in Uma <laughs> Napoleon is all set and ready to um, answer to <laughs> your questions. You'll definitely um, read them and uh, respond to those that are questions, those that are comments, you will respond to them. And Ulko Napoleon, you've had the messages. Um, what's your reaction to them? Um, plenty of them. Um, I want to say thanks to all the listeners for their contribution. This is the beauty of our democracy and processes. Like you rightly said, people are very much interested in the Australian People's Party and what we do. And uh, I, the messages are too many, but um, I summarized one. Let me clarify to one of the listeners who spoke about NEC. Mm -hmm. It is not the National Electoral Commission that is involved in our election. Okay. The NEC we're referring to is the National Executive Council of the Australian People's Party. The SLPP Party. NEC. The SLPP. Is the NEC is an abbreviation for National Executive Council, which is the second highest decision-making body. And uh, secondly... All what we've been doing our internal party elections is purely from membership of the SLPP, membership contributions and everything. So it's not about um, state resources we are using to conduct our elections. Then thirdly, definitely there will be free and fair elections today, as I rightly said. It's going to be conducted by an independent body, IMOC. They will be involved in the conduct of that election. And they started the process yesterday by bringing all the candidates together and talking to them, agreeing on all what they are going to do, agreeing on the rules they are going to apply and in the elections today. So that will be seen at play today during the elections. And uh, definitely 
the first lady is a member, as I rightly say, is a member of the SLPP, and she is also a delegate. She has all the democratic right to participate in the process. Mm -hmm. She's not going there, as the person put it, and there's no interference. She's part of the process. She's an SLPP, and she wants to be participating in the process. That's why she was in that hall, and I'm certain she will be there again today to cast her own ballot and uh, participate in the process. Okay. So those that have been, those that sent comments and... Um, positive comments and others, I want to say thank you very much. And as SLPP, we are a democratic party. We will not skew democratic processes. We will not shy away from it, no matter the difficulties or the pitfalls we will have along the way. But mm. we will continue on that trajectory because this is what we want to see our country be and this is what we want to see the okay. party do. That's why we have survived we for 70 years as a party. Finally, before we let you go, um, uh, I saw yesterday someone um, Kalilu Tutangi actually posted on, <laughs> on his Facebook page that the uh, Minister of Information, yeah. Radu Swari, <laughs> um, has decided to contest um, for the National Secretary General position of the SLPP. Yeah. Are you determined to go into an election and challenge him? <laughs> <laughs> um, let me declare here yeah, that I'm going for re-elections for mm. the position of Secretary General. Okay. And I'm very more certain that my record stands very tall in the SLPP. Now, when I was elected in 2017 in uh, Kenima, I had only one manifesto promise, which is I told them in Kenima that I was going to steer the ship for the SLPP to come back to power, and I delivered on that. Uh, Honorable Adusari is an elder brother and a very good friend, a very personal friend. We contested in Kenima himself and many others. Mm -hmm. ran, we ran together, and I emerged victorious. So if he's coming back so again to So you beat him again? <laughs> no, he's my elder brother. I will not talk about <laughs> beating him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank so you, you very but much. you don't feel intimidated at all. And this is coming <laughs> at a time when um, you're being accused of um, supporting certain candidates or manipulating elections as well. Do you don't feel intimidated? No, the SLPP. That's the SLP, I mean, I don't feel intimidated. I have been couched in the in the very practices of internal party democracy. I know easy lies the head that there is a crown. I said earlier. So I am in the seat right now. Whatever happens comes on my head, and I take responsibility for that. And, uh, but those within the party do understand. As a delegate, we have about 1,055 delegates mm. that will be voting at that national delegate conference. And it's a countrywide thing, and uh, we'll see how it goes. But I'm certain that on the 22nd, 23rd, <coughs> after the 23rd, I will come back again to the studio, you and I, and I will, I will make another promise again for 2023 general elections, and it will come to pass. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Umaru Napoleon Kuma, a National Secretary General of the um, Sierra Leone People's Party. Thanks for joining us in the program this morning.